Top of the day, beautiful people. Happy Monday. Um, not Monday. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It is January the 11th, 2022. Day 351 of year three of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. Another three-year consecutive day count. Day 1019. Guys, today we are starting over at Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read the first three chapters, one, two, and three. And then we're going to read the appendix of um, the walk of the spirit, the walk of the power. And we're going to go ahead and start um, my big toe today. We're going to start in the introduction because the walk of the spirit, the walk of power, the um, appendixes, as I look through them, I'm going to get through that pretty quickly. All right. Tony J. Shalom. It has been a while, bruh. Auntie Shalom. Shalom. Audrey Shalom. All right, y'all, so let's get this started post-haste so we can get going. All right, so let's go ahead and do the Shema. Remember, we're reading the whole chapter for the full context of everything now. So let's do that. And that's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's the call to wholehearted commitment. All right. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that Yahuwah, your God, commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear Yahuwah, your God, as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as Yahuwah, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, Yahuwah, our God, he is one God. And you must love Yahuwah, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Yahuwah, your God, will soon bring you into the land that he swore to give to you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful not to forget Yahuwah who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear Yahuwah your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must only use his name. You must not worship any other gods of the neighboring nations, for Yahuwah your God, who lives among you, is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test Yahuwah your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of Yahuwah your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in Yahuwah's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that Yahuwah swore to give to your ancestors. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land, just as Yahuwah said you would. In the future, your children will ask you, what is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations that Yahuwah our God has commanded us to obey? Then you must tell them, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but Yahuwah brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. Yahuwah did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give to our ancestors. And Yahuwah, our God, commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him so that he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. But we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands Yahuwah, our God, has given unto us. Well, I was sitting here reading this. Let me make a correction, y'all. Let me tell you what I did. Sunday, before I got up, uh, well, after I ended the video, I just went ahead and wrote my notes in here for Tuesday. Today is day one of year four, y'all. I'm just, I was looking at, I'm not even paying attention to what I was doing. I say this day 351. This is day one. We starting over. Every time we start over, a year would have passed. 
actually we're a little bit over the year mark okay because remember the days we didn't count if we just look at the number of days like i said 351 that's way over the year count because remember we didn't count the sabbath days and we didn't count that whole week i was out sick um this year as well so we are at day one of year four but the um uh, well let's say the four year consecutive day count now is 1019. I'll make sure I put that in my notes. All right. Mom, shalom, shalom. All right, y'all. So we starting at Genesis chapter one, starting all over where it all began. Well, not really. It's not where it all began, but for the sake of what we're reading, it's where this began. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I'm reading from the NLT version, y'all. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters. I'm sorry. Nope, I skipped the whole line. Hold on. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And evening passed and morning came, making, marking the first day. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky, or in other versions, it's the firmament, right? It's what separates the waters above from the waters below. And evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And this is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind, and God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth, and that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. With that being said, have y'all, Shayla Hager, hey, Marie, Levine, Yahuwah is one. Yes, hallelujah. Have y'all seen uh, China? Well, we just getting the news, but China been working on this for years. China has recreated and launched their own sun. Y'all seen it? I'm going to share a couple of links if y'all haven't seen it. All right? Some of the videos are older, but for some reason it's just coming to light now and everybody is talking about it. They have recreated their own sun and they launched it during the nighttime. And when that joker went up, it lit the entire sky. So clearly it didn't light over here, but just over there right but it lit the entire sky i'm gonna share a few of them videos with y'all today the system that they use they have been working on this for years and they're also going to launch a moon yeah the new sun is very hot it's five times hotter than the real sun yo i got a couple of videos some of them they're not that long i think the longest one i got is probably about 10 minutes but i think it, it, it's well worth the watch some of the shorter clips you got snippets from other people who was actually a couple people who were actually standing out there in different places 
in China when they did this launch at night. Literally, it turned night into day. I'm like, amazing, right? Amazing what the mind and determination and cooperation of other people can do. They have created a sun, right? I'll show that to y'all. It was amazing. I'm just like, wow, right? Okay. But just in case y'all hadn't heard, I'm going to share that with y'all today. Then God said, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Trina, Tiffany, hey girls, hey. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And Genesis, if y'all don't know the bigger story, the bigger story is found scattered in a few different books. This Bible is really just the cliff notes of the biggest part, right? The, the, the bigger story. So a lot of people say, especially if you're coming out to church, they'll say that was Jesus day in the beginning. Absolutely was not. Right, because if you read the bigger story, you will see when it said like us, it was encompassing all the heavenly hosts, right? There was actually a conversation that was going on with the angels who he had made before he made actual flesh and blood. He said, so let us make them in our image, in our likeness, right? So just in case, that was just a real short, uh, <laughs> a short aside for those that still didn't know that. But you can find that in the book of Jasher, and you can also find that in the legends of the Jews. And it's found in a couple other people's manual scripts in other religions, right? Okay. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. And this is where we can find the beginning on what our diets are supposed to be. I know we've incorporated over the recent centuries, meat, we were never designed to eat meat, right? There was specific diets given to the human species, and there were specific diets given to the animals as well. And in neither of those places are the animals to eat us or are we to eat the animals, right? Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. Some people may say, okay, well, after the flood, no, after the flood, you better go read that really closely. You got the wrong people explaining that to you. It still says the same thing, right? People trying to use that portion of the scripture after the flood, well, the animal shall be meat unto you. No, there was a misspelling of the original word that should be in there. Uh, remember quite a few videos ago, it's the, it's the English language and how they play on words, meat, meat. And meat, right? Meat, meat, and meat are a couple different things, right? Meat as in flesh, meat, 
Then you have, I'm a meet you here. And then you have something that's meet for use or useful to you. And that's that the one that was meat unto you, it was the one that said the animals shall be useful unto you. That's the proper term that should be there. But if you let the wrong people explain that to you, they are going to tell you it was meat so you can eat. But that's a part of the whole sacrifice and garbage that was added into the scriptures as well. All of it connects, right? We were never supposed to eat. <clears throat> Excuse me. We were never supposed we were never supposed to eat flesh and blood or other things that contain a uh the breath of life in it, right? Okay. Isaiah 44 says, Y'all created the heavens and the earth by himself. It does say that. He did I didn't say they helped him create. They was having a conversation, Dana. I ain't say that the angels helped him create. Let let us make them in our likeness and our image. Not that they helped them form, but they were present at creation. He wasn't there um, like they were present there. So if you read the other manuscripts, you will see. Clearly, you would have to know that they're there if we were created last. Everything else, everything else was created before we came on the scene, right? So we was like the last, the late comers to the party, the very last thing that was created. And everything that had been created before is all encompassed inside of us, right? We're like the ultimate culmination of everything else that was created because everything also is in us. Okay. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth, man and woman in the Garden of Eden. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils, and man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in the Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord made all sorts of trees to grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of in the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed through the land of Eden, watering the garden and dividing it into four branches. The first branch, called Pishon, flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Pure, Aramaic, resin, and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Ashur. The fourth branch is called the Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the, except the, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. And if you read this and, um, hold on, can you review what the animals were to be used for since they had so many? Is that factual something that was added for sacrifice? That was added for the sacrifice. Remember, animals, think about what some of the animals were used for. They were used to like, not only all the land they had, graze, keep the uh, grass cut, but they used animals to carry things as well. So it's a lot of different uses for the different animals. And even goats, I did, um, I may have shared this a while ago because I, I remember saying something about it. And I was like, we might need to get us a couple goats. But goats were very useful. Not only did they, um, I'm going I'm to get a, hold on. Before I even go into that, I'm going to share with y'all. I'm going to find it. Some different uses.
Okay. I'm going to share the uses. I don't want to throw out some of the ones. Um, yeah, carrying water, clothing, field work. They, they were meat for use, right? They were useful. Transportation, all those different things. So I want to... I want to, before I talk about that, I'm going to show the stuff to you first. And then you can kind of look over it and see. All right. Then the Lord, I was saying something. Hold on. Hold on. Oops. I was about to say something. Oh, that's what it was. But you needed 40,000. They didn't need 40,000. That 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 was just a part of their wealth, but they also traded as well. That was a part of their wealth. They were riches in houses and land. So, like say if it was like a silversmith over in another camp or place or whatever and they had something, they also used them as form of currency as well. And plus they was reproducing. So they probably had more than I ain't gonna say more than what they could handle, but it, it was it was they looked at it more as wealth and 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 trading useful for trade and stuff, you know? So it was a lot of domestic things that they were using them for. Um, what was I about to say here? Hold on, I lost it again. Hold on, y'all. I was about to say something. Oh, I mentioned this the other day. Okay, I know what it was. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Talking about the knowledge of good and evil. So remember I said this time when we go through, we're going to start looking at the body more. And I meant to bring my um my my book down because I wanted to read an excerpt from it. But I, I'll pull it up because I have it on um my what you call it in here in the Kindle. But I got to go through and find a page and it's going to probably take a few minutes. But I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste some things for you <clears throat> so you can kind of look at it so we can see. The anatomy of the um the anatomy of the human and how we can look at the Garden of Eden like we ourselves are gardens, right? And everything that you can find in the Garden of Eden or anywhere on the earth, we can find like it it's like partner within our own cells. Remember, so the the serpent in the garden is what? It's our spine, right? And I know they created stories around the principles that they're trying to teach you about yourself. So that's why I think it'll be useful to share some of these. I'm definitely going to share it today. It's going to probably be a few different posts because I was actually, because I couldn't save the photo, some things I had to screenshot and crop. I just, I just needed to make sure it was going to be clear. So I'm going to share a few of those in the community section and on Facebook today so you can kind of see. And I'm going to try to explain. Some of the posts may be a, a little bit long, but I want to make sure I explain it the right way so you can kind of see that way you have visuals. So remember, don't get while we're going through this time, don't get stuck on the stories. Where it said that oh, we know what it said, right? We're just looking at it from another vantage point so we can see it in our bodies and we can operate and get closer to y'all, right? So that's what we're doing. I ain't if you want to keep the stories, you keep the stories, it's fine. Keep them, right? But we're not so much harping on the stories, we're just trying to pull the principles out of the stories this time around okay all right so i want to make sure it's clear so with this right here if you eat of its fruit you are sure to die and remember that where it's been a lot of different um debates going on about that particular conversation between eve adam and satan in the garden or the serpent right um but what we found out that it was really a sexual thing that was happening because they were killing that seed that was rising every single month they began to eat from that tree when you when you use up that oil it does cause you to die it wasn't an immediate death which is what eve thought yah had said but remember she got the information from adam right but the word and i, I forget the actual words um but I'll pull them up for you. I'll post those today what the actual words is. Eve thought it was the word in, in you want to call it Hebrew, or the language where Yah said that you would immediately die, right? But the word that Yah used, it wasn't an immediate death. He said it, it would be a gradual death. How do we know? Because we can see it happening. She didn't die immediately once they part took of the fruit, right? Once they partook of the fruit, whether you want to say it's a, the apple or whatever, school. Sunday school teaches you what's an apple 
as you get a little bit older, it's time to put the children's stories away, right? And we can talk about facts. It wasn't a apple, right? They were partaking in something that y'all said, don't touch everything else. You can enjoy wisdom from every other tree, the, the benefits from it. But this one, don't touch, right? Because this is your source of eternal life. So as they began to eat from that, what began to happen to the age of the different generations? The ages began to decrease more and more over the generations to now we're living to be less. Few people, we're climbing back up because we're at that point where now we're going to be increasing in years again and we're going to start living longer and longer, right? 100, 200, that's going to be nothing in a few generations, right? Because now we're we're reversing the curse or the curse has been reversed and we're going back to the original law, statutes, and commands of Yah and the, the true knowledge of what it's been from the very beginning, right? Things that we shouldn't be consuming, we're learning, oh my gosh, we shouldn't be eating this, this is causing death. Even, um, even foods, and you can go test this. All you have to do is test these principles with your own body. No matter what people say or what they teach you out your mouth, if you test it, I guarantee you eating flesh will cause your body to do things that it shouldn't be doing, that it wasn't designed to do. It's going to clog your arteries. I don't care if it is kosher or clean or that the Torah says you can eat it. I'm telling you. If it violates and tears up the body, you can almost guarantee 100% that somebody added that. And y'all never said that from the beginning because he said, I come to give life and life more abundantly. Matter of fact, even that, that's from the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, he tells you to choose his laws, right? I create good and I create evil. Choose the path of life. This is the path of life, right? But until we're able to separate the truth from error, we think everything in there is true and everything is not. And all you have to do is a simple test, right? And a simple test is testing it with your own body. Figure out a way to test it with your own body. Joy, shalom, shalom. Genesis 126. We actually talked about that when we passed it. We were talking about everything that was created. We were the last one. She said, can you explain Genesis 1, 26? When he said, let us make man in our image, he was talking to everybody that was present there. <laughs> Who was present? The heavenly host. The heavenly host didn't help him create. He spoke. We came into being, but we were the last. And just in a nutshell, we were the last ones to come into being, right? And so when, when he created us, remember, these bodies right here that we have today, these are far off from the bodies that we had in the Garden of Eden. They were more like light bodies, right? But once they began to partake and uh, eat that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or destroying that seed, it, it was actually really a sexual thing. Not that they couldn't have sex, they did. But when they began to have sex, um... Well, I explain it like this today. When you have sex on the wrong days and you release those fluids that actually you pull it from the 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 serpent in your garden, right? You pull it from that you pull it from that tree. That tree of the knowledge of good and evil is your spine, right? And it connects to your brain. And it's that oil that's released. It goes down and then it rises back up. That oil, because that's what causes enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment, but not also not just spiritual enlightenment. It causes health and healing for your entire body. And it can be tested. It can be tested. That's why I was telling y'all when we're looking at the, the calendar, the one that shows the, the zodiac signs on the, the sign that you came into the world, if you're a Gemini, Aries, or whatever, if you look at that, it'll show you on the days that your body, your your body should be operating according to the clock in the sky. But depending on how you've treated your body, it could be a little bit off. But as you begin to clean up your diet, return to a plant-based diet, your body will begin to line back up. It'll begin to reverse the curses that that you've taken into yourself it'll begin to heal your body that that um that chrism oil that they call it that cerebral spinal fluid also causes healing to your members as well so as that begins to happen your body begins to regenerate cells are regenerated the blood is cleansed all from that but if you continue to overeat you're having sex 
all willy-nilly having it at the wrong times of the month. It's affecting that oil that's being released from the brain every single month. And you're impeding your own process of life. So it's it's a regenerator thing. That's why people who go to plant-based diets, they start looking better and better. Their health is restored. Why? There must be something to it. And you can simply test it. You can simply test it to see that it's true, right? Because sometimes just sitting and listening all the time, it doesn't really help us, especially if we're not applying what we learn to our life. So that's something simple we can test, right? And a lot of people, they just depend on where they're at in their growth. They may not be ready for it. And that's okay, right? But test it test it in your life to see if it's true. And I'm a 100% believer at this point because it was hard for me to break away from um, the, the tour portion that I now know has been added. And it's complete lies in there. They've added, put, and the Lord said, I, all of that is lies, right? Because I it, it stumped me for a while. I'm like, Father, okay, so this I'm reading the Torah. I ain't even reading the New Testament. I'm reading the Torah. He said, look at it a little bit more. Go check into it. He said, I never said those things. It was added. And I, as I researched, I began to realize, holy crap, this was added. If anything doesn't net life for you, it's a lie. It's a lie. And y'all didn't tell us to do it. And that is something that people just don't want it pork chops if you're still eating pork or the, the the chicken the big thing i see now people fighting over the chicken or this is a hybrid bird we ain't supposed to be eating chicken and people who love chicken going back and forth who said we can't eat chicken that's not in the tour find me the bird give me the species i'm like y'all is all foolish y'all ain't supposed to be eating none of it well y'all fighting back and forth over the different flesh y'all can and can't eat y'all say y'all ain't supposed to be eating none of it a lot of them still got heart problems arteries clogged up can't get, get brain fog, all this stuff. You ain't supposed to be eating none of it while y'all fighting over whether you can eat the chicken or the turkey. And turkey is a buzzard that's right along with the pig. You ain't supposed to be eating that, right? But you watch some of the health things that say, oh, go to turkey. I found, look, as I was transitioning, I remember I was actually eating. What was I eating? I had made me a sandwich with like the lettuce and tomatoes. I, I made it, I put cucumbers and stuff on it too, like my vegan mayo. And I had sliced some turkey. And while I was doing research and I came across that, I was looking into it. I was like, turkey can't be bad. They just help, you know, because I had cut down from the hard meats. You know, I stopped eating the pork first. Then I stopped eating the red meats, right? And then, remember the quail. Look, oh, they talking about the quail too. Everybody that bit into that quail, give us the flesh. From eat the leeks and the melons and the quail. Y'all rain down quail, but everybody that sunk their teeth into that meat, what happened to them? Nobody, nobody seems to want to pay attention to all of those things that are right in there, right? Nobody pays attention to that because you let the wrong people teach you about this with emotion. And then it's like, yeah, see, I told you, but you, but you're going to the doctor still. You still got high blood pressure, my dick. You still got diabetes and you eating the clean meats of the Torah. So I ain't right about that. And I'm telling you, it wasn't until I completely gave up all the meats. Oh, I, I'm hopping stories. I was sitting here. I was at, when I was eating this turkey sandwich that I had made me, I was actually sitting here. Pigeons, Trina said pigeons. Pigeons are actually kosher, 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 believe it or not. Um, uh, I was sitting here researching when I started looking into the turkey. While I was eating a turkey sandwich, and I darn near threw up all over my laptop. Oh, I spit it out. Every everything that was turkey, because I went from the ground beef to the, the the ground turkey. I went in the freezer. I took all of it and threw it away. I'm like, and you you would I guess common sense if you're thinking yes, turkey is a friggin' buzzard. Why are we eating? Why are we eating? Animals that eat dead animals, like they feast on dead animals. Some people, oh, well, it was farm raised. Who gives a hoot? It's still unclean, <laughs> unclean for us to eat. They serve their purpose here in the earth, just like pigs serve a purpose here in the earth, but not the purpose of feeding your belly, right? They are not made for human consumption, right? No animal, nothing with fl nothing with flesh, like animal flesh. And blood and the life force flowing through them, even the birds, quail, fish, the animals. No, in the sea. So what, Jesus? It. I've been telling y'all these are stories that made up. 
It goes against the natural laws of your body and it's easily tested, right? That may be hard for some people until they, they get serious enough. Okay, I really want to test this. But you'll begin to see as you get all of that out your body and you cleanse your body, your spiritual enlightenment just takes off, right? Because now you don't have other beings inside of you warring against your spirit, right? Yeah, a double death, a double death. You're eating something that's dead. We were created to eat what was living. Even the words of life, we're to eat living foods. Even plants, when you cut them and you eat them in their natural state, you can saute them or whatever, but it's the life inside of it that gives us more life, that it cleanses our blood, that it replenishes. It it keeps the colon from being backed up. You go on a kosher diet, a, a kosher way of lifestyle, eating the meats from the Torah, you still got animal flesh putrefying in your colon. And you telling me this is good to eat? You preaching sermons, you're hollering at, oh, we can eat the chicken. You know what I mean? Let me, let's, let's get a snapshot of your colon. And, and you, you're going to fight to the day you death. You're going to keep eating this chicken. I don't care how good it tastes. Let's look at your colon because I guarantee you, your lifespan is going to be cut short, Right? Starts creating all types of problems. And half of them that's talking about it, they got medical issues. They say, oh, I've been under the weather. Not that they catch this common cold, but they have recurrent issues they haven't figured out that that links back to the meat that they're still consuming. Israel, hard-headed Israel, right? Uh, our folk, hard-headed. Just don't want to give it up. Just be honest and say, look, I don't want to get up. Leave me alone. I can respect you for that. But as long as you know you're cutting your life short by doing this, you okay with that and okay, then that's your life. Go ahead. Makes me wonder if I can eat nothing forever. <laughs> there are some people that there are some people that only simply consume the uh consume juices from fresh fruits and coconut uh water and stuff. And they they are fine. They are vigorous, they are strong. Because what your body is doing, it's breaking it all down to that liquid anyway. And uh, the, the fleshy stuff, all that stuff passes out the system. It's really pulling the nutrients. So when you're drinking like juices and coconut water, you're just quickly assimilating those nutrients into your body, into your bloodstream, through your organs, which is what your body's body is doing anyway. Your body is juicing all of that stuff to get the nutrients out of there, right? So I'm just saying, just do a little bit more research into it. You know, especially if you're still eating the meats and you following the Torah and it's kosher rules. All that stuff, the priests, I'm telling you, all that stuff was added, y'all. It's lies. And I figured that out um, when I couldn't get rid of some things that was going on with me. And at this time, I had already cut out everything, right? I was eating strictly the things that Torah said was kosher and we could eat. It was those very things that was causing some of the female issues I was having, Um and a lot of other things that I couldn't get rid of. The migraines, everything is from the animal flesh, the hormones, all the things that are pumped inside of these animals when they kill them. And they may kill them uh, uh, humanely or whatever, but still those things are released when the body dies. And you can't wash all that stuff out of the flesh. You can't. Absolutely impossible. So you're consuming death. And by consuming death, you cause your body to die a little bit more every time you ingest it. And it doesn't come right out. Some may come out, but there's it, it's clogging up your arteries. It's sitting in your colon for years. That's how people get colon cancer. All this flesh that they've eaten from years ago. That's why when you do a excuse me, a um a water fast, well, technically if you do a water fast, you're gonna stop eliminating probably about day ten. Mm, maybe day seven. Day seven. To day 10, you want to stop eliminating all together while you're water fasting. Um, and then when you uh, get to day about 14, your colon is going to release all of that um, um, uh, mucoid, they call it mucoid plaque. It is black. It's been sitting in your colon. That's that meat and all that flesh, animal flesh that's been sitting in your body for years. That's why it's black. It's putrefied. That's why when you pass gas, you stink. When you pass gas, you ain't supposed to smell nothing, right? But if you, for years you've been consuming meat, that's probably not even fathomable to you. But when you release gas from your body, it's not supposed to have a smell. I didn't believe that was true until I went 
to uh, eating a plant-based lifestyle. And, and what happened? I'm like, well, by golly. That's true. Matter of fact, you ain't got to wear deodorant anymore. You don't get musty. You get musty because you got animal flesh rotting in your body. People, <laughs> I'm telling you, I learned all this from personally cleaning up my life. Yes, it, the animal flesh, the meats is literally, like my mom just said, it's literally clogging your literal life force, right? And some people, you some people can be... It, yes, it's rotted in the colon. Some people they can they can hear from y'all, you know, but it, it 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 not as clear as they would, and they're not as proficient as they would be if they weren't eating meat. You got people in the pool because just look at them, you know. You got people is overweight, and I'm not the skinniest person. Overweight, they can hear something from y'all. You can see the gifts working, but it's not until they actually begin to align themselves with the principles of life in their eating lifestyle that they begin to take off spiritually like none other. Right? I'm telling you, it's a principle, and it's something everybody can test with their own body. And that it, and that's why I stopped arguing with people a lot of time i explain it to them i'm like well you can go look here and you don't even have to believe anybody just simply test it go test it that's what's gonna make you a believer right and everybody else don't want to argue with you like bro go test the print until you test it yourself we really don't have anything to talk about right yeah so um but yeah but with my personal life once i stop eating meat all of those things that i was experiencing those women issues All that stuff stopped. And over a couple months, everything, like everything cleared up. Even the migraines. I used to have to take Motrin going to the doctor when I was in the military. Couldn't get rid of them. But I was constantly eating meat too. About a month. I'd say uh, a complete month after having my body cleansed. Because I would do colon cleanse. Just kind of flush it. And then when I heard about Yaki, I will take his herbs. And I really only tried one thing from Yaki. It's the three bitters. And that stuff right there. If you never use anything from Yaki, them three bitters will set you or set you right. It'll cleanse out everything and it does a really um good flush. Matter of fact, for those of you who have been thinking about, it, let me show you real quick. Hold on. Look, it, this is not a plug for Yaki, but I do use this stuff, and I'm I, I can attest to it. My mom is here, my sisters are here, and the the three bitters. I think it's the best because it cleanses all the systems in the body. Today, he has a sale going on. Um, twenty five percent off. These are normally one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty dollars, but today it's a sale. But the bitter one, right? Bitter one. And he shows you how to take it. And they're teas. You simply boil them down and you drink the tea. All three teas back to back. But this first, um, this first bitter, it cleanses. You will see up here, it cleanses the lymphatic system and the skin. And then the second bitter, and you have to drink them in order to. The second bitter cleanses the blood and the organs. And the third bitter cleanses the nervous system and the colon so if you're having some neurological things going on um ticks in your brain all this other stuff right i'm telling you this will cleanse you out when i had um when i was doing that foolishness eating a lot of sweets i started feeling things happen i was like yep i didn't didn't completely overdid it because i was going in for like three weeks just a bunch of sweets all different kinds of sweets and everything. And I started feeling stuff happening. What I did, I got the bitters. And about two days after taking the bitters, all that foolishness was flushed out of my body and I stopped doing that. Um, But I'm telling you, them them three bitters are the truth. But he has, and they're, they're, they're fresh herbs. It takes about three weeks to get to you, but it's worth the wait. They're working on getting their product out faster, but they want to keep the quality of their product so it's just um it's just a few of them there and they are personally they have this stuff at their uh laboratory their their office their clinic their little warehouse or whatever and they are personally um bagging all this stuff up and packaging it and sending it out so that's why it takes a little bit longer because there's so many orders coming in but they keep you updated so but it's well worth the wait you know i'm I'm telling you so if y'all got things going on and you need to cleanse your colon headaches 
skin out breaks. If your skin is breaking out, remember, your skin is one of the biggest organs on your body. That means your liver is dirty. You need to cleanse your liver, probably your liver and your kidneys, right? I'm telling you, them three bitters is the truth. And I'm about to order me some more. Why, um, this is the first sale that they ever had, 25% off um, on everything except for the, I think it's the geogenetic stuff that they got. But that was... It's not a plug for him, but it's a plug for him, but only, and I get paid for it only because I use it and it works. It, it really does. It'll help with, if you got like a mental fall, you, sometimes it's hard for you to be clear. And I was experiencing that a little bit. I'm like, man, I'm like 40 years old. I, I can't be experiencing all this stuff right now. But once I, and it's all come from that meat in your colon, through your body, clogging up your arteries and all that stuff for years. Um, that's what happens and it begins to, it literally begins to affect the life force in your body and it stops producing and, and operating how it should until you get all of that crap cleaned out of you. Once you do, once you do, I'm telling you, keep track of what's happening so you're going to notice the difference, right? And so that's how we know, like this story, it's been taught to us wrong and what it really means, Right. Because you can tell everything that Yah has given us, it's testable. It's testable. It's testable. And we can find out what's true by simply just being a little bit more diligent than just sitting and letting people just talk to us and believe in what they say. I'm going to test what you say. You ain't going to have me up the river without a paddle. Right? So, but yes, it, it definitely, definitely works. So, so I'm telling y'all, y'all, y'all got to try it. Now, I will tell you this. It's called Three Bitters because they're extremely nasty. First time, took me about an hour to get it down. About an hour. But you just got to be a G and take it to the head. You might need, you can't probably, some of you may not be able to just gulp it down. You might throw it right back up. Just depending on how your mind is with drinking stuff. But um, it's extremely nasty. It's extremely nasty. Probably Bitter too is probably sweeter because it has some berries in it. But the other two, extremely nasty. I'm no, I'm not even going to lie took me a while to get it down second time took me about 30 minutes but now i'm prepared for it it's just like look <laughs> this is doing what i needed to do cleanse my body and it works so now i can get them all down in probably about 15 minutes so i'll drink the first one take a couple minutes walk around the house go do something come back drink the other one <laughs> go walk around again then i drink the third one and that's it and it's best to he said take them after your evening meal, and he would recommend while you're taking it, you're on an all-fruit diet. You could be juicing all fruits, but fruits is what we thrive on anyway. It's going to help the process, and it's going to really help to do what needs to happen. Yeah, I'll share the, I'll share the link. I'll share the link. If somebody got it, go ahead and put it in here. It's yakiawaken.com. That's it. You know, and if you're looking, if you're looking at his webpage from your phone, um, when you click on the, the ellipses to do the drop down menu and you click on something, it may seem like it's blank. Just scroll up. It's loading. Just scroll up until you see the words, then scroll back down to the top of the page and it populates for a long time. I was like, what is wrong with this? I don't, I don't know, but that's, it's the stuff is there. Just scroll up till you see the words and scroll back down to the page fully. And it, it, it'll happen in a couple seconds, but all right, y'all. So, um, but let's finish reading this. Genesis chapter 2. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he had rested from all his work of, cre of creation. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. The man and the woman in Eden. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth, for the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground. And then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. 
Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing it into four branches. The first branch, called the Pishon, flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aramaic, resin, and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Ashur. The fourth branch is called the Euphrates. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Genesis chapter 3, the man and a woman sin. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the fruit of any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. And that right there in itself is a sermon in itself. We're going to come back to that a little bit later. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. But let me say this. Let me say this. Let me make sure I say it the right way. I make sure I got to use it on the church side and the other side. Hold on. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let me explain it this way. Okay. So you know how in church you have pastors or those who are or filled with the Holy Spirit, right? But then we talk about it, the ones who haven't gotten their lifestyles under control and it seems like they can preach preach far down from heaven from the pulpit, but then next thing we know, they're getting caught up in sexual sins and stuff like that, right? Okay, so that's how we see it happening in the church. But then you see the videos of like Kundalini. They, 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 they mislabel it. They're, they're talking about two things, but they're mixing it up, right? So when you eat from this tree, right, when you tap in and you start messing with that, 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 that oil, right, that, that gives you knowledge of both good and evil, it's likened to those people who are tapping into the spiritual realm illegally with drugs, right? And what happens is instead of getting kundalini, they're actually getting, and we misunderstood, kundalini um, is, is like the, the, the pure flowing of that energy all the way up and flowing back down. But when you tap into it the wrong way or you tap into it and you don't clean your life up in these chakras or your your eating habits and your your sex life and, and all these other things, how you speak out your mouth, the way you think, then you don't get kundalini. It's not kundalini that you get. It's actually called kundabuffer, 
right? I'm like, what? So I've been learning about that. I'm like, oh, snap. And so I'm relating it too. So when you start tapping into it, you can you can taste some of that knowledge of good and evil. But if you're not cleaning up your life, you that's that's how people get into the, the dark arts or the, the dark magic, so to speak, right? They're not tapping into Kundalini, the pure source, because pure source will lead you down a path to clean up your life. Everybody else that's tapping into the, the quick fix or whatever, just give me a spell for that so we can handle this right now. They're tapping into the Kunda buffer, so to speak, right? And then they start getting themselves in trouble. That's how you got rogues and outlaws because they get the opposite of what it was designed to do. If you start tapping into it, eating it without letting it flow, without letting this tree flow and produce its fruit, without produce its fruit without being touched if you just let it flow it's going to do its thing and it's going to give you life as you grow anyway right um but if you start taking a fruit from it prematurely and not knowing what you're doing matter of fact you don't know what you're doing because you're pulling the fruit from it anyway right you don't realize that it's a part of this garden, but this particular plant, you shouldn't ingest it. Just let that do its thing because it's here. Think about the different plants. It, well, if you have different plants, some produce fruit, some don't produce fruit. Some produce like uh, healing balms and other different things. And some are just there because they help, um, um, what's the word? They, they, pr they produce something that makes the ground more rich, right? So just leave them alone. Don't touch them because they're doing things that you can't see with your physical eyes, but they're definitely very much needed and you shouldn't touch them. Leave them alone. Let them grow. Let them go through their process. And that's what that is. Don't touch that tree, right? Let it do what it's going to do. And as you're cleaning up your life, it's going to, it's going to produce what it needs to produce for you anyway, right? So when you start pulling from it, not knowing what you're doing because you want stuff early. Yep, I want that now. Give me that. You get yourself in trouble, right? And we have all these rogues in the church. You got people out here walking with ticks and doing crazy stuff. And because they now they instead of getting Kundalini, they got Kunda Buffer. And it's crazy, y'all. Listen, you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both the good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord asked, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you gave to me who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the wild. Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you, and all your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat up its grains. By the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Paradise lost. God's judgment. Then the man, Adam, and his wife, Eve, because she would be the mother of all who live. And hold on. Then the man, Adam, named his wife Eve. Because she would be the mother of all who live. And we know that's not her name. But we ain't going to have a conversation right now. Robert, Shalom, Betwabu. 
And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. And it was at this point where we got locked into these bodies. He didn't give them clothes like killing an animal and create a garment. No, this is animal flesh that we have. Remember, we were light bodies, right? Light bodies. There were bodies. Okay, we're going to use the example from the New Testament, right? So you can kind of see the type of body. Remember after J.C. rose from the, from the grave, he was able to walk through walls and stuff? It was that type of body. It was the glorified body that we originally had. But when we sinned, we got imprisoned in this. And now we have to climb our way all the way back up to get back to that point, right? Which is why we got to go through these steps and learning these things. We should really know about our bodies because everything we need to attain eternal life is already within us, right? But we've been cut off from its wisdom until recent years. And then the man... Adam named his wife Eve because she would be the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Then the Lord God said, look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out, take fruit from the tree of life and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending him out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life, right? All right, beautiful people. So that is our reading for today, Genesis 1, 2, and 3, and we had eyes. I said we was going to start, what you call it? We ain't going to start today. We're going to start it tomorrow. But let's finish up this, um, let's finish up this, this appendix from the walk of the spirit, the walk of power, right? Okay, so appendix one is hindrances to receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, right? So it's talking about tongues and this is closing it out. We finished chapter 15. All right. Receiving the Holy Spirit is such a simple thing. However, the devil tries to complicate matters, doing his best to build strongholds in people's lives against speaking with other tongues. Maybe you have desired the baptism in the Holy Spirit for a long time, but something seems to hinder you from receiving this precious gift from God. I'm going to talk about some of the most common hindrances to receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit that I've come across in my years of ministry. I also want to give you some scriptural truths and guidelines to help you overcome those hindrances. All right, strongholds of the mind. The devil will try to reach into a person's past and use negative teachings the person has heard to build mental blocks or strongholds in his mind against speaking with tongues. A mental stronghold is a system of thoughts empowered by a person's emotions. This system has been created by a lifetime of faulty reasonings and the thought patterns that block the mind from cooperating with God's truth. However, these strongholds can be pulled down by replacing them with God's reasonings found in his word. Some people may have sat under wrong teachings that taught tongues are not for today. Others may have been taught that only uneducated, emotional people speak in tongues. Whatever the deception, these people need correct teaching to help them to break out of the stronghold of the mind that hinders them from yielding themselves over to speaking in tongues. Also, sometimes a spirit of denominationalism is present. Religious spirits often try to blind the minds of people so that they cannot comprehend the truth. They convince people to camp on their own revelation, even if their doctrine is contrary to the word. When these mind-blinding spirits are in operation, they must be bound. Only then the person who is seeking the baptism in the Holy Spirit will be set free to receive from God or to receive being able to hear clearly from Yah's spirit, so to speak, right? And the section is entitled, I'm not good enough to receive the Holy Spirit. One of the main strongholds in people's mind comes from the teaching that a person has to become good enough to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Some holiness churches teach that a person must be sanctified before he or she can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. People are taught that God will not fill them with his spirit unless they are already free from the deeds of the flesh, such as smoking, drinking, and chewing tobacco. Consequently, 
People seek the sanctification experience for years and years, but never seem to have the power to get rid of certain sins in their lives. And because they don't believe that they're good enough to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit until they are sanctified, they never get filled. So some people are like, well, that can't happen. I need to clean up my life first. No, that's what you need to clean up your life. So if you're still doing all this, make sure if you... If you didn't got filled, practice it often. It'll help you become stronger to put away some of these deeds of the flesh, so to speak. These these hangups and things you have about yourself. Some of these addictions by praying more in that heavenly language that Yah has given to you, downloaded into you, prayer and meditation. It's going to help you become stronger to push those things away, right? Sometimes it's a slow process for some. Other times it's a faster process for others. Consequently, people seek the sanctification and spirit experience for years and years, but never seem to have the power to get rid of certain sins in their lives. And because they don't believe they're good enough to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit until they are sanctified, they never get filled. But the fact is, the opposite is true. The Bible says that it is through the Spirit that you mortify the deeds of the flesh. Romans 8.13 the Holy Spirit works in your new nature to put to death everything that is displeasing to God in your life. So to deny people the infilling of Yah's spirit, the very means God uses to accomplish the cleanup process in a person's soul and flesh is against the scriptures, right? Because you need this. If you're denying them this because you think they're too bad of a sinner, then you're in the wrong because they need that to not be what they currently are to clean up their life. You're denying them the tools that they need to be set free. You see, you can never become good enough to receive the gift of the Spirit of Yah on your own. That's why God literally takes out your old nature and creates a new nature in your human spirit when you are born again. It is this new righteous nature, not your works, that God uses as the basis for baptizing you in His Spirit. No other preparation can be made other than what He has what He has already accomplished. The Holy Spirit, who has done the work of recreation, is now ready to infill you to step out into that new nature you have received. Hold on. The Holy Spirit, who has done the work of recreation, is now ready to infill you to step into that new nature you have received and to help set you free from every sin of bondage. This is the work of sanctification Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Quote, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. End quote. To accomplish that work, the first thing the Holy Spirit wants to do when he infills you is to pray for you. So he begins to create a supernatural language of tongues on the inside of your spirit. That same language he is creating in your spirit then automatically begins to form in your mouth. The moment you give utterance to those words and start praying in tongues, you walk into a divine classroom. Standing at the chalkboard is none other than a master teacher, the Holy Spirit, or Yah. Remember, he has come into your life to teach, empower, edify, and sanctify you. That's one reason God took the understanding of your tongues away from us. That way, we don't know when he's praying for us about sin in our lives we don't want to deal with. As we pray in tongues, we may be thinking, I want a Lexus. While the Holy Spirit is actually saying in the language of tongues, I think you should stop yelling at your spouse. So don't try to become good enough to receive the Holy Spirit. Let him dwell in you in his fullness and determine to pray much in other tongues. As you do, he will lead you in the mortification process that will make you more like him. The next section, I don't have to speak in tongues to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a line drawn in the spirit between the actual creation of the supernatural language in a believer's spirit and the journey of this language from his spirit to his lips to be uttered. It is on this line that the devil is most successful in erecting strongholds that hinder believers from speaking in tongues even after they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. For example, many believers wrongly believe for one reason or another, that God wants them to have the baptism in the Holy Spirit without the experience of speaking with tongues. Although this type of situation is possible, it is not the perfect will of God. People who think that way truly do not understand the great things God wants to accomplish in their lives through this simple but precious gift of speaking with tongues. 
Next section. I am waiting for the Holy Spirit to make me speak. Other Christians labor under the misconception that they must wait for God to move on them and cause them to speak in tongues. In reality, <clears throat> God is trying to get them to receive what he has already done. You see, when we ask Yah's Spirit to fill us, he fills us. The entire time we're trying to get him to give us the language of tongues, he is waiting for us to receive and give utterance to the language he has already created inside our spirits. He creates the language, but we are the ones do, who do the praying. This truth is revealed in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Quote, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. End quote. But the, devil, but the devil doesn't want people to know that. He tries to make them believe that the reason they haven't spoken in tongues is God's, is God's reluctance to give them this foundational re revelational gift. <clears throat> the enemy knows that if he can convince people that for some reason they are not able to receive the gift of tongues, he can discourage them from pressing on through to the actual utterance of the language itself. Many times people in this situation become so discouraged that they stop speaking, I'm sorry, that they stop seeking the baptism in the Holy Ghost because they are afraid of failing again. <clears throat> they come to the wrong conclusion that in some way they aren't worthy enough for God to fill them with his spirit and give them the gift of tongues. That's why many believers are actually filled with the Holy Spirit when they pray, but they have yet to speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit created his supernatural language in these believers' spirit as soon as they asked to be filled. But the strongholds in their mind block them from yielding over to the tongue, yielding over their tongue to the utterance of that language. The Holy Spirit does as much as he can in these believers' lives, but they forfeit the great benefits that speaking in tongues provide. How to overcome strongholds of the mind. If the devil is trying to use any of these strongholds of the mind against you, I have some good news for you. There is nothing more powerful than God's word centered around godly worship to pull those strongholds down. Perhaps you may have struggled to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have spoken only a few words in tongues and would like to be set free to speak fluently in the language the Holy Spirit has given you. Well, the key is to build up your faith until it is stronger than a stronghold in your mind that prevents you from receiving what you desire from the Lord. I would suggest that you diligently study what the word has to say on the subject of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. Listen to teaching tapes on the subject. Read this book you hold in your hands again and again until these scriptural principles about speaking with tongues are planted deep in your heart. Then find yourself a place of worship, put on some worship music, and spend some quality time alone with God. The fact is, one of the most powerful ways to minister to your own soul and to get yourself ready to receive from God is to worship Him. This is why Ephesians 5 verses 18 and 19 says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. End quote. As you worship the Lord, begin to speak the word and praise him for the answer. Lord, I am a receiver. Thank you, Lord, for filling me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me the ability to speak with other tongues. You see, your soul will transform you to whatever you subject it to the most. Jesus will become to you whatever you call him because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or it should be Yah. But remember, he, he still calls Yah Jesus. He interchanges Jesus and Yah. But we stop doing that. Okay. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. If you call him your baptizer long enough, you will destroy with the word all those strongholds in the soul that have hindered you from receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Focus on God and his faithfulness to give you the gift you desire. As you stay in that place of worship, 
your mind and emotions will begin to be baptized with the presence of God and his spirit will come upon you and fill and overflow your spirit. Continue to worship the Lord until all the debris in your mind that is keeping you from speaking with tongues is cleared away. You may not tangibly feel anything at this point, but you will notice that new words are floating up from your spirit and forming in your mouth. The Holy Spirit is creating that language on the inside of you. And that's how it was for me. Like when I started, I only had like a couple syllables, but I was diligent with them couple syllables that I kept repeating, right? I would put praise and worship music on in the background and I would just pray. And then once I learned to focus my mind by reading a word while I'm praying in tongues, um, it just kind of began to develop. I heard another syllable and I just strung it together with the two. So now I was saying three syllables and now it's longer. So where it seems like it's two sentences now, but I was faithful with the few, right? And I was blessed with a little bit more. <laughs> when that happens, just stop. Hold on. Let me see. You may not tangibly feel anything at this point, but you will notice the new that new words are floating up from your spirit and forming in your mouth. The Holy Spirit or Yah's Spirit is creating that language on the inside of you. When that happens, just stop worshiping in English and speak out the words your tongue wants to form. Yield over to that language the Holy Spirit is creating in your spirit. Then continue to speak in tongues until those supernatural words are flowing out of you fluently like rivers of living water. Okay, demonic strongholds of the soul. Another reason some believers are hindered from receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit is that some kind of demonic stronghold has been carried over from their unsaved lives and they have not yet been delivered from it. For example, these believers may have been involved in drugs, in occult, or in the occult. Now, here in the occult, what it's talking about, we're not talking about hidden knowledge, but actual people who have actually been a part of actual Satan worshipers, Jan Shalom. Um, this, this, this type of thing, right? They're, they're trying to, they're using spells and stuff to tap into the spiritual realm illegally. This is what he's talking about. We're not talking about using a wisdom and growing. For example, these believers may have been involved in drugs in a cult, C-U-L-T, or in the occult. Their involvement could have been as simple as dabbling with, he put horoscopes or playing with the Ouija board, right? Okay. So, with horoscopes, I didn't say read the horoscopes. I'm telling you about the signs, how they, how they, uh, how they identify who you are. We, ain't, I ain't never told y'all go read the horoscopes. Don't read the horoscopes. We're simply looking at the signs and aligning it with the clock in the sky. I don't want to get anybody confused. I don't read the horoscope section. <laughs> I'm looking at how it lines up with the const the signs, because that's what they use. They call them Zodiac, right? That's what we're using. We're pulling that wisdom, how they mislabeled it, and we're lining it with the clock in the sky. Now, I just don't want to get anybody confused. But even dabbling in these areas of darkness can open a door for demons to take up residence in people's lives. The more heavily involved a person has been in this type of activity, the greater possibility that a demon actually gained access to possess that person's unregenerated spirit. Now, when people are born again, any demons present have to move out of their newly created spirits. But sometimes an evil spirit finds an opportunity to merely move over and take up residency in a new believer's soul. In this case, the demon may hinder a person from receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues, but he cannot stop the person from receiving. So if you have ever had any association with occult, drugs, the occult, and so forth, and you have had trouble receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, consider this possibility. A stronghold may exist in your soul because of that past association. <clears throat> Subconsciously, you may still be leaning to some of that old influence. If that is your situation, you can take hold of your rights according to the word of God and confess by faith that you are free of the strongholds that are hindering your soul. And just pray this prayer of faith. Okay, so here I read this prayer. I yeah, I read this prayer. So if, if this is a prayer you think you need to pray, you can pray it on your own as well. But I'm gonna read through it. Heavenly Father, I repent for seeking knowledge outside of you through the occult or through drugs, a cult, etc. And you add in whatever it is that it was that you was doing. I ask you to forgive me. 
I also command every evil spirit who may have gained access to my life when I open the door through these demonic activities to leave me now in your most holy name. He say Jesus name, but I don't use that name anymore. And I only pray in the name of Yah. And now shut the door, shut the door to all such spirits. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to fill those empty places with your spirit. Now, according to your word in John chapter 8, 36, that says, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I am free in your most holy name. Amen. Perhaps you were once strongly involved in these activities. For instance, most cults instruct people to invite spirit guides into their lives, which constitutes as idolatry. If that is the case, you may need to fast and pray to prepare yourself to receive your deliverance from that stronghold of the soul. When you sense you are ready, pray the prayer outlined above. After you have dealt with any possible stronghold of the soul that may have been hindering you from receiving, follow my earlier suggestions. Find a place of worship and begin to thank God by faith for setting you free, filling you with the Holy Spirit and giving you a supernatural language of tongues. Stay in that place of worship until you receive what you desire from God. Then as you go about your daily life, remember to continually praise Yahuwah for your new freedom and for the gift of the Holy Spirit you have received. Okay. And that was the end of Appendix 1. Appendix 2 is the prayer of salvation, right? It's this whole church prayer of thing with Jesus. We're not going to do that, right? I'm, I'm not going to do that because it goes into things that... It, it, it goes against Torah, and I can't in good conscience read that, right? But what you can say, right, you can just do a prayer from the heart, right? Because this prayer asks Jesus to come into your heart to where, as a Torah, tell, y'all tells us what to put in our heart. He tells us to put his commands into our heart, right? So if you want to use the framework of this prayer and just replace it with the Torah stuff, you can do that just to make sure you're not doing anything against Torah. That's what I would recommend for that. But I'm not going to read that, right? Because it there there are so many things in this prayer. It's just going to I would have to go through it's going to be too much. So I'm I'm not going to read it. <laughs> I tell you what to do. You can use it as a framework, the bolded portion. You're not praying to Jesus like everything in here is praying to Jesus, right? So you can say your prayer and direct it towards Yah. And you can ask Yah to help you to hide his word in your heart that you may not sin against him. You can repent of all your sins and that that's still good. That should be a daily thing. Repent, but don't just repent and keep on doing. You repent and literally make the choice to turn away from what you was doing, which is what Torah tells us and teaches us to do, right? So you just adjust this prayer to what you who was said, right? Repent, Father, forgive me. For all the sins that I've committed, help me to hide your word in my heart like King David did. To keep me from sinning against you and breaking your laws. And may you fill me with your precious spirit. Fill me with your wisdom and your grace and your knowledge. And help me to understand. Teach me. Lead me and guide me. In your most holy name. Hallelujah. That would be my prayer, right? This prayer of salvation, I can't get with that. <laughs> okay, so that was Appendix 2. Appendix three is prayer to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are reading this book and have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is a simple matter to receive this precious gift. And like we kind of just did that even with the appendix two we just did. Some people like to pray separate prayers. You can do that if you like, but you can make it all one. Father, fill me afresh daily with your wisdom, right? And so it, it goes to another prayer here, right? Um at the bottom of this, and I'm not going to do it. You can use it as a separate framework, like I said, but still, you're talking to Yah. It's just him. It's always him, right? And it's up to you, right? Okay. If you're reading this book and have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is a simple matter to receive this precious gift. All you have to do is ask in faith for Yah to fill you with his spirit and give you the gift of speaking in tongues. When you do that, his spirit will come upon you and you will sense his presence. Immediately, his spirit will move into your new nature and begin to create a language on the inside of your spirit. When he does, your tongue and mouth will begin to shape the same words he is creating on the inside of you. And then he say, now I pray this prayer from your heart. But you can just do this. Say, Father, create in me a prayer language that I can pray, you know, 
So when you're in times of prayer and meditation, you can use it for your own spiritual growth and enlightenment, right? So you can use that as a, a, a guide and just change it, just to make sure it aligns with words of truth, words of the Torah, right? And now if you have prayed this prayer, don't speak in your native language any longer. Yield yourself to the presence of Yah's spirit and begin to speak out those words that you don't understand with your mind. It may sound a little like baby talk in the beginning, but as you continue to yield yourself to speaking the words that the spirit gives you, you will begin to pull more of a flow out of your spirit. Soon you will be speaking fluently in your new supernatural language. Continue to pray in your new language for at least 15 minutes to establish yourself in this gift you have just received. You have a reason to rejoice. You have just entered through the doorway that will lead you into the supernatural realm of God. And that, my beautiful people, is the end of this book. And the last page, it actually has his contact details. So if anybody wanted to um, mail something you can write or call and it has the phone number in there um but all right y'all so that is it that was the end of that i actually thought we was gonna get done a, a lot sooner to where we can start in at least some of the introduction of my big toe but we'll just start it fresh by itself tomorrow and we probably won't even get through the whole introduction it starts with a synopsis hold on We'll definitely read the synaps synapses, the acknowledgments, the preface to the reader. So we'll probably end up pausing in the preface tomorrow. Actually, we might be able to read all of that. Okay, but anyway, we'll start it fresh tomorrow. All right, beautiful people. So thanks for hanging out today. It is January the 11th, Tuesday, 2022, day one of year four of reading through the books of Law and the Prophets and of the four-year consecutive day count day 1019 we read genesis 1 2 and 3 and we finished up the rest of the walk of the spirit the walk of power i'm going to remember to share these and put livestock share the livestock stuff with y'all and also a few of the body um pictures with the explanations and the flow of all that stuff so be looking for that today um give me a couple hours to get all that done i got some other stuff i have to get done first thing this morning and then once i get a break i can sit down and start um putting that together so remember some of them may be a little long um some of them be a little bit shorter but so you can actually start seeing actual pictures and being able to actually um to actually see it and not just hear it because a lot of time we get um misconceptions of things or we taught wrong because they don't do like they did in the earlier days they they paired it with visuals that's why there's a bunch of hieroglyphs and things everywhere right if you just speak to somebody you can overcome them and put them in bondage with word spells right because you don't have anything to attach these words to and when they do give you pictures they give you pictures that are wrong right so we're trying to correct all of these things we may not have it all the information but what we do have we're gonna share we can work through together and what y'all got y'all share with a sister <laughs> all right beautiful people bella knocked out i ain't hear her jump off my bed yet she came and i told y'all she be she be getting good sleep you're welcome marie you're welcome joy okay the, yeah the book we're starting tomorrow my big toe they got it on everything hardback audible and um yes and um kindle so this is what we started and it's about <clears throat> it's almost 300 pages it's, uh, it's 288 pages so for the next couple months we're going to be going through this it's going to be so exciting and jen asked me in a comment if we were going to read the whole trilogy i think we will but before we get to book two and book three, I think we need to let a little bit more time pass. But especially for those who haven't already been in the habit of practicing prayer and fasting and meditation, using your tongue language, some people call it chanting, right? It Like when you start, especially when you start off, um, when you first get your prayer language, um, especially people that start off with one or two syllables, 
if somebody in the Eastern world heard you praying in your tongues, they would say you were chanting because a lot of times that's how they people start off. It's like with one syllable or one sound and they just repeat it over and over. Excuse me. And it grows. Right. So I'm telling y'all, we're doing the same thing everywhere for the most part. There are some people that are up to some nefarious things. Right. <laughs> Hold on, son. So, but we ain't talking about them. I try to be real specific about stuff because there are some people that are actually using these things for nefarious purposes and just doing things that I tell you stay away from. Don't do that. That is not what I was talking about. So anytime there is like this gray line, I'll try to unblur the lines for you. Make it complete black and white. We don't want any blurred lines. We don't need any gray spaces, right? So, but before we read those, because it goes... It's good. If you have it, you can keep reading it. You know, it's good to have the information. But I think you will get more out of it if you have more time to practice, so to speak, and actually have personal things and see development in your life. Then you actually have mental and physical pictures and experiences to connect to these words and charts that he's given. It's It, it, it just makes it more rich when you have... That's why you have science class and lab time. Right. So a lot of time the principles don't kick in until you actually get a chance to practice. Right. So that's why I said we won't read it right afterwards. I'm sure it's going to come down the line where we'll pick it back up at this point. I think we still will. But after we finish reading this one, we're going to read that one by Mahatma Ashby um, about meditation. And I gave you all that um, link when we talked about it last time. But it's another angle so you can see and this one shows more pictures about meditation and what happens with the body so by this time by the time we get to the meditation book that's i'm thinking why because i was going back and forth between which one should we read first um and then y'all just kind of confirmed to me go to my big toe next all right it'll still give you a couple more months to practice because by the time we get to the meditation book where it show you some of the egyptian stuff you won't get so hung up on some of the stories and pictures you will see clearly that these gods that they created are not true living gods that exist and i explained that and they explained that these are not real people. These are not real gods. Each of these gods that the Egyptians show is representing an aspect of divine creativity of Yah. You know, so people get caught up like, oh, this story, this was a real God. No, it wasn't. And they tell you that what what that's what was good about ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt. They told you none of these people existed. None of these deities existed. We've created this to help you better understand the creator. So each divine attribute, they broke up and they gave it a name and they paired it with, a, a, they paired like a masculine energy with a feminine energy. So you can see how they work together, like um, peace and harmony works together it's like that but over here in the west they just tell you like peace and harmony and they give you one character jc but it's better to see how they the characteristics are separate but how they work together right so if you're living in p if, if you're a peaceful person you're going to be in harmony with all those around you so when there's peace there is harmony as well or grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life so these are the things that we're going to have a little bit better understanding and by the time we get to this it, you're just going to be able to see a lot clearer and it should like lock in and be really clear um but what we're reading after that one there's a couple up. I'm not exactly sure what order to put them in just yet, but I need to see once we get down the road a little bit. All right, y'all. So with that being said, um, and I, I think it, it, I think it just depends. Like, I don't think it's set in stone. Well, y'all may know. I just don't know yet because depending on how we progress will depend on which one we need to go to first, right? Depending on if everybody's practicing in their own time, being diligent, meditate, prayer, building up themselves, seeing how they're developing. It'll depend on whether we need to go here and reiterate some things just to kind of make sure you're getting it before we move on to the next step of the equation, right? We got to get the addition subtraction multiplication and division down before we can start doing fractions right so that's kind of like that okay but tootie is down here now 
Babe, we about to do the blessing. Come on, let's go do the blessing real quick. All right, come on. <clears throat> I talked till she came down here. All right, y'all, so remember the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. Come on, Pooh. Sit there right here. All right, put your cup right there. She got to grab her spoon. I got a question for you. Hold on, Jeremiah. Trust me, her prayer is not going to be done anytime. So okay. I'm still going to pray. <clears throat> okay. Sit this. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Sit this right here. It's a fair question that I think everybody should have. Uh, Wait a minute, Jeremiah. Let's do the blessing first. Mom, you see yes. you're not paying your knee right there. Yeah, I know. My knee is fine, Pooty. Okay. Turn around. Okay. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah will kneel before us, presenting gifts, and will guard us with a hedge of protection. Yahuwah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards us, bringing order, and he will provide us with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahuwah will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon us, and he will set in place all we need to be whole and complete. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. <laughs> all right, beautiful people. I love y'all. Jeremiah said he had a question. All Mom, right, wait. what's your question, Mom, son? Wait. Hold on. Mom, Tootie, you need. Mom, I just need look. Look. What, girl? Look. What? Look. Well, you said you don't have Roblox. Yeah, I don't. I don't want them touching my laptop. I don't have Roblox up here. What's yes, you wait. do. Oh, well, I guess I do, but that ain't going to be open up here. What's your question, Jeremiah? What is our birthright? Okay, that's going to be long to explain. He asked, what is our birthright? That's sum it up. Sum point. it up. To sum mm -hmm. it up. Sum it up. Because people got to get out of here. What we are here for, we are literally here to learn. Our birthright, our birthright is, is this world and not to be confined from it. Our birthright is freedom to run this road and populate it. Chill. So chill. 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 Tootie. Hold on, y'all. And another thing for race, just to put that out there. I don't know why people look at race as factions. I honestly look at race as... Hold on, Pootie. Hold on. This is the thing. Okay. If there's a great oh. wisdom, he does everything for a reason. Mm -hmm. So he'll put in different type of colors knowing that it would be an obstacle to get past that with certain naive <laughs> Okay, beautiful people. Let her go ahead and end this. Me and Jeremiah finish this conversation. Go ahead. Go ahead, too. Love y'all. See y'all back here tomorrow morning. Bright and early, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go ahead. Finish it.